How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. A um, little bit of barrel-aged um, farmstead ale, if you will, uh, in the form of Hill Farmstead's Dorothy. Um, this beer, uh, I picked this up at the brewery uh, when I was on my um, honeymoon uh, up in Vermont. Um, uh, picked up two big barrel-aged ones. I took picked up their Sioux, which I ended up doing a um, live review of not too shortly after I came back, about a month or so ago, as of this filming. And um, this is the other one. And I was kind of in the mood to kind of have a sipper and enjoy the night. It's a nice, beautiful night out. I'm going to crack this open after filming, go sit outside, enjoy the uh, enjoy the uh, sweltering heat outside. And, and uh, yeah, beer could do it. So... Got a good beer. Got my nice uh, long stemmed tulip here that I'm eventually going to send to Ewart, my buddy Ewart. I told him I would give this to him. I haven't sent him a beer mail yet, so I get to use it while I have it. But then it's all yours, buddy. So, anyway, uh, as far as what it says in this bottle, it says Dorothy. It says a dry hopped farmstead pale ale aged oak barrels, um, 7% alcohol by volume. Um, ingredients uh, pale malt, American and European hops, ale yeast, and our well water on the side here. Uh, Dorothy. Um, it was our grandfather's sister. Hill Farmstead Brewery rests on the land that was once home to her and her 13 siblings. In her honor, we have Dorothy. We have aged Dorothy in wine barrels for one year. We crafted this beer from American malted barley, malted wheat, New Zealand, and American hops. Our distinctive yeast blend and water from our well. After a year conditioning on in wine barrels, Dorothy is ready for lease. Uh, this is the ale that I dreamt to have shared with Dorothy. Um... That be that. They go about Hill Farm said yada yada yada, and this was bottled February twenty eighth, two thousand eighteen. So you're looking at about oh, four months, five months on the sucker. Label wise, quintessential Hill Farm said labeling. Let's crack her open. She doesn't want to open it. These Hill Farm said bottles, man. Sometimes they just don't want to open. I don't know what it is, but we'll give you a proper pour in this one. I've been giving you guys a proper pour lately. I don't know what's wrong with me. I usually give you the douchebag pour, but... Yeah. So, what do we have here? I mean, look at that. Just clear, crisp, yellow, almost like highlighter yellow in color. Uh, but still getting from... Um, still keeping from getting synthetic. You know what I mean? It's not like, you know, false and, and, and kind of chemical looking. It's more kind of like um, champagne looking in color than anything else. Um, just just microscope off white head, super tight compact bubbles, creaminess, a little gravity to find bevelness in there, and a soft carbonation. Does she look like a pale ale? Not all that much. Traditionals, maybe a little bit, but does she look like a wine barrel aged beer? Yes. Looks more like a sour than anything else. Get a nose. Fun. I'm getting like a funkiness in there. When I talk about like a barnyardy funky horse blanket, so I'm actually getting a little bit of kind of manure vibes off of it, to be perfectly honest with you, in a very positive way. Very subtle though. The biggest portion of the show is that um is that wine. It's it, it's a bright green, yellow, big, huge vinous grapiness. Um, it comes off tart, it comes off a little bit acidic, it comes off a little bit skinny, a little bit earthy, a little bit tannic, but at the same time it's just quintessential kind of that that white grape through and through. You get that nice yeasty funkiness, a little bit of soft, toasty kind of oakiness. It's not necessarily like a fresh white oakiness. It's not necessarily a burnt charred kind of oakiness. There's a little bit of soft toast to it, but it's like somewhere beyond vanilla, above or washed down from vanilla, like a second use kind of barrel. But at the same time, it's there. So you're getting that soft woodiness, a nice big, bright, light, grapey venisness. And uh, it, the beer is still present, though. That's the thing. It, it's weed heavily in that uh, that wine barrel, but at the same time, you do get a little soft, um, sweet maltiness. And like I said, there's a little bit of that manure-based kind of funkiness, a little bit of farmy, a little bit of barnyardy, but more in that kind of manure kind of way as opposed to a hay kind of horse blanket kind of thing going on. I think it smells pretty pretty. Pretty pretty. Pretty, comma, pretty. <sighs> big grapes man those grapes are come off multi-dimensional too um they're not just just hey it's a grape it's like you know what i mean you get a little bit of skinniness you get a little bit of that fleshy grapiness you're also getting a little bit of kind of fermented grapiness from it you're getting multiple levels to it so 
it smells pretty pretty comma pretty or pretty dash pretty whichever one we want to call it let's dive in cheers unique in a very very awesome way I keep wanting to say pretty you know a lot of pretties in here there's a big level of acidity to it but it's not overtly sour um it, it, it's like the the acidity is coming from the grapes but in almost like the grapes are running in a kind of lemon lime citrus kind of vibe um The dry hopping in this comes off super vibrant. It's a very aggressive bittering, especially for the level of beer that it is, the kind of beer that it is. You're getting all those notes that I basically talked about in the taste. You're getting that big wine grape thing. It's not necessarily a boozy whininess. I'm sure, you get a little booziness from that whininess. It's 7%. It's a little bit up there in that kind of farmhouse realm of ABV beers, especially as far as um, Hill Farmstead goes. But it's more of a kind of grape. It's not even must. It's more of a fleshy grapiness before it even turns musty, gets to the point of being a must on a barrel or being a super uh, high ABV kind of wine portion of the show. So it's a little bit more kind of um, uh, unfermented kind of grapiness. Hmm. Each sip, that oak comes through bigger and bigger and bigger. More and more wood, more and more dryness. It works though, because it, it, you get that component of the sweetness of the beer, the sweetness of the wine, a little bit of dryness from the wine too, and a little bit of dryness from the yeast. It's kind of playing a little bit of tug and war, tug of war with itself back and forth what does it want to be does it want to be a sweet beer does it want to be a dry beer does it want to be a bitter beer the dry hopping adds another level to it and it's just it's it's tugging in a good way sometimes the beers fight fight within itself this beer is fighting because of itself if it makes any sense like your beers sometimes the flavors are so unique that they're not part of the beer these are kind of pulling in three different directions but that causes the beer to have a center uh, causes the beer to have make sense as opposed to trying to pull itself apart. Get a little deep today. Get a little bit, of, you know, there's levels to this one. Yeah. This is exactly the beer I wanted. I think that's the second time I've said that when I opened the whole farm set beer. Is that I kind of wanted a beer that was impactful enough. For me to be wowed, but at the same time, nuanced enough for me to be wowed, but at the same time, comfortable enough, like a warm sock they've worn a thousand times, that kind of comfort to where I didn't have to th really go crazy with it. And that's kind of where this beer lands. I mean, you're getting everything about it. You're getting that dry hopping. You're getting that wine barrel. You're getting the beer itself from where it was when it originally started to how it aged. So you're getting that bit of pale aleness, but you're getting that funkiness, that little manure thing I talked about. You're getting that kind of wine portion of the show. You're getting the oak portion of the show. You're getting that dry hopping. It all works together. It's all cohesive. And it ends up being something that makes total fucking sense is is about as delicate and as pretty we'll circle back to that word as i assume dorothy would be or was but at the same time impactful enough to be probably as impactful and as forceful as she was you know the whole farm said thing it is what it is you know what i mean like they copyright the whole farm said thing Nobody can use it, but I, I grown to have a little bit more of an appreciation uh, for the whole farm thing now. Going from growing in the middle of nowhere, but I've been pretty much you know uh, an urban 
person for several years and uh, moving to a farm and, and doing farm things or in being out here and, and, and doing that, I get a little bit more of an appreciation, especially, you know, he talks about, you know, a lot of, um, you know, the, the beers are named after, you know, uh, whether it be, you know, people that have passed on in his family, like Dorothy, and they're talking about, you know, I don't know, I have this weird connection where I think about it, like, you know what I mean? Like, I think about Liesl, um, my wife, and I think about, like, this kind of reminds me of her in that sense that it's delicate and nuanced and, 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 and soft and, 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 and very not abrasive but at the same time it's impactful and strong and meaningful and stuff like that so it's like a little bit of a juxtaposition of of the name and the meaning but at the same time it makes sense in my brain getting way off tangent there let's dial it back let's get in the rails so barely a it's not a sour beer it's a funky beer very subtly funky nice soft peppery spiciness bit of funkiness like i said there's a little bit of that barnyard thing going on but it's steering more in that horse blanket manure kind of thing um you're definitely getting the dry hopping definitely in the taste not so much in the nose but you're getting it in the taste and you're getting this kind of nice big spicy bitter bittering citrus vibe off of it um big wine notes off it the uh, oak plays a big role in it especially the more you sip it the more you get and then at the same time there's this big fleshy non-fermented kind of white grapeiness going on it makes it super pretty super fucking delectable um super tasty beer awesome absolutely fantastic um let's talk about it it's one of the better what do i classify it as barrel aged beers you want to go that simple do we want to go that simple Barrel aged <sighs> funky beers. Let's go funky. See, it's not really a funky beers. Not dark. Barrel aged non dark beer. <laughs> Whatever that means. Sure. Let's just cut the chase. And all of those ones, I didn't know what to call this. It'd be in there. Is it going to be number one? I don't know. But it's definitely worth being in all those conversations. Value and availability. I think I paid 30 bucks for this. I waited in line. I actually don't have a problem paying 30 bucks for this. If that makes any sense. So there you go. Um, availability, brewery only, and leave you with if you like what we well, like this. If you like beer. If you like um, nuanced beer. If you like yeast driven beer, hop driven beer, funk driven beer. If you like, circle all the way back to beer. Um, might not float everybody's boat, but if you like nuance and complexity in beer, you're going to get it ad nauseum in this beer. And it's going to take you on the journey. You take, take you on the journey. Make you think about crazy things that I already talked about. Plus more because it's going to be your experiences that you talk about. But it's a fun beer. Tasty beer. Awesome beer. Can you get it? I don't know. Go to Fellow Farmstead. If they don't have this, they'll have fun, something similar. It's probably one of the best things about the place. So it's tasty. It's fun. If you like beer, give it a whirl. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting stuff. And... Hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Hopefully enjoying a nice little hill farmstead right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.